Welcome back to Toyota Speedway at Irwindale for the NASCAR Toyota All-Star Showdown. The late models are rolling. 25 cars going 50 laps and already a problem for the 99 of Tim Smith out of Bakersfield, California. Look at the rear end on that car. Yeah, oh. rear suspension's broken on that car. I, I, would, I would imagine that that more than likely would be terminal for him. What a heartbreak. Very difficult situation. They rolled the cars out here about 45 minutes ago, but you see that car not obviously run in the right direction, so he will pull into the pits. Take a look at our starting lineup. Sean Woodside and Nick Janitis making up row number one. Janitis, a three-time track champion here at Irwindale. Tim Huddleston back starting in the fourth position, won this race last year. Mike Johnson starting back in sixth, won it in 2009. Second 10, Lufton, Kenny Smith, about Matt Scott. Matt Scott was from Pine Grove, California, 2010 late model champion from All-American Speedway. Jonathan Gomez will be doing double duty tonight. He's also running the K&N race, sixth in points last year. Taylor Cusick rounding out the field of 25. Let's head back track side to Dick Bergeron. And Tim Smith's car is up on jack stands. This is a major problem. The rear end in this car has actually moved. The locating rods somehow or another have failed it. He almost certainly will not start this event. And Dick, one driver that had to race his way in. We talked about this being like the Gatorade duel at Daytona to get in this race. They split the qualifying down the middle and you had to race your way in to get in this field of 25. One driver here not able to post a time yesterday is the number 40 on machine of Travis Irving. He finished fifth here in the late model points over 16 races. He's just one of seven drivers that have gone to victory lane. So talk about experience up front. This man already had to race his way in in those 20 lap qualifiers to get in the show tonight. So I think we'll see a little bit of more work out of him heading to the front for the 41 of Travis Irving. Again, winning on opening night and finishing fifth here in the late model standings. And doesn't it, it isn't it just a sweeter thing when you're able to race your way into an event Absolutely. Travis Irving getting his ride here tonight by racing his way in earlier today. The field all in line. The lights go out on the pace car. Maybe one more time around before we see the green flag. The super late models ran 75 laps last night, and it was a fairly clean race. Just three cautions thrown throughout the, that entire event. Rick, we talk about this being the ladder system of NASCAR, and, and what a great <laughs> thing it is for these drivers to be able to do this thing right here live on television. Not only do you have the k &N owners in the infield, not in the garage area and, and scattered around the grandstands watching, but you have everybody, you know, thousands and thousands of people watching at home. So uh, what a great opportunity for these late model guys. Nationwide and around the world. Again, Sean Woodside in the 45, Nick Janitis on his outside. Coming to the green flag, we're underway in Irwindale. Trouble back about the third row. The 17 car, Mike Johnson had trouble. He had trouble on the start and this qualifying race as well. Two and three wide, fighting for position behind the front of the pack. Out in front, though, it's Sean Woodside in the 45. Nick Janitis in the 30, cuts into second. You know, Sean Woodside, we talk about him finishing second in this race last year. He's a former West Series champion. He won the K&M Pro Series West Division Championship back in 1999. What a different line we're seeing these drivers take tonight. We saw most of the drivers running up higher. And early on, Woodside was down at the bottom of the racetrack. As we also see Nick Janitis go down there, and even below the white line, we're seeing some other drivers try that part of the asphalt. We'll see if that continues to work as we get some heat in these tires. That's Brandon Davis in the 15 that's running down almost on the apron. So Woodside, Janitis, Huddleston, Davis and Johnson are your top five. The battle for third between Huddleston and Davis. Davis on the inside, Huddleston on the outside. Brandon Davis able to make it work right now. Looks like Nick Janitis may be holding up Huddleston for just a little bit. Sparks coming out of both race cars. Running again, the high line around this racetrack. Progressive banking, six degrees at the bottom of the track, 12 degrees at the top of the track. That's what lends itself to, to two and three wide racing. 
You see Brandon Davis down there at the bottom of the racetrack. He looks like he has a very, very good race car. It's a shorter way around, but he doesn't have that banking to lean on. That's why it's very, very difficult for him coming off the corner to use all that throttle. Looks like he's going to grab the edge on that 30 of Nick Janitis as they come out of turn four. Oh, and problems on the back stretch. The 88 of Dylan Hutchinson hard into the outside wall. So our first caution coming out after lap seven. Dylan Hutchison. See a lot of damage to the front of that race car. Looks like these drivers were really struggling trying to get some heat in the tires. Already made some contact with the outside wall over there in turn number two. Slid all the way down the racetrack. There's another look. Just got a little bit loose. And then overcorrected, got into the outside wall. Good job by John Moore avoiding. So Hutchison brings out caution number one here in the late models from Irwindale Speedway. Sean Woodside out in front of Nick Janitis. Brandon Davis, Mike Johnson in the top five. Welcome back to Toyota Speedway at Irwindale. Already on the record, the 88 of Dylan Hutchison early on in this race. Coming off of turn number two, had some contact. Got a little bit sideways coming off of turn two. There he is, the red car. Then overcorrected, swung back out into the outside wall. Actually made a little contact with the four of Sean Bennett, but Bennett was able to continue on. And it looks like the end of the night for Dylan Hutchison. They've got him into the infield now, and the field working their way around this half-mile racetrack. Still under caution. They have not given the one-to-go signal yet. Tomorrow, the Rolex 24 from Daytona continues with Johnson, Pruitt, Franchitti, Montoya, and more of the greatest drivers in the world. They're competing in America's premier endurance race. It's the Rolex 24 at Daytona, continuing live tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, only on speed. How about that great crowd here tonight? What a spectacular event they are getting ready for and seeing right now. Sean Woodside still out in front. How about uh, we talk about at 9 o'clock tomorrow having the 24 hour race back on the Rolex 24. They'll race till then, <laughs> yeah, by the way. That's right. Through the night. Battle Brazil right now leading the 24 hour race. Really? Got a nice uh, cup flavor as well as IndyCar flavor, as you mentioned in that race. AJ Elmendinger, Michael McDowell, teammates, Jimmy Johnson obviously racing. Jim, what's going on down there on pit road? Jonathan Gomez was scheduled to race all three events. The SRL champ and West race rookie and just pulling away from his pits, guys. The 22 machine, he brought it in. He started back in 19th. Thinks he may have the wrong carburetor. They didn't go under the hood. They went to the adjustments on the chassis to get this car a bit better tuned in for Jonathan Gomez, who we'll see later tonight in the showdown as well. So we're only a 50 lap race right now. I don't have a whole lot of time to make up this track position. And the laps count under caution. A lot of all-star races sometimes don't count the laps when you're under caution, but they do in this event. So we have completed 12 laps. We're on lap 13 of the 50 scheduled. One of the most famous names ever to run the Rolex 24 is Hurley Haywood. You know, we remember him from driving the Brimless Porsche way back in the day. Well, he's racing again, came out of retirement, and leading the GT category. Very impressive. We see Richie Altman of Riverside, California on pit road. Looks like they're working on the right rear of that race car. 